In this module, we'll talk all about loudness and levels and all the different ways that music and audio was perceived and measured. But before we address any of that, we need to talk about the obscure and often overloaded terminology used in acoustics to represent the general concept of how loud a sound is. So I've listed the following terms here. Loudness, level, volume, amplitude, gain, and drive. Is there a difference between them? Yes. Are they interchangeable? No. Is the difference between them important for a regular person to understand? Probably not. Is the difference between them important for an audio engineer or programmer to understand? Absolutely yes. The question, how loud is a sound, is not an easy question to answer, as you'll soon find out. But the language used to represent this concept can be contained and simplified so the discussion becomes easier. These acoustical terms can be broadly categorized as either being objectively measurable or subjectively perceptible. What does that mean? Objectively measuring something means that you're quantifying the result as a mathematical formula or a number. And you can repeat the measurements under the same conditions any number of times, and you should end up getting the same result every time. Subjective perception is a lot more hairy. It's how an individual can perceive something, and it's more a qualitative measure than something that can be quantified into a number. You might have heard of these terms in the context of music, that a sound is either boomy or punchy, muddy or warm, airy or harsh, bright or dark, loud or quiet. What might appear loud to you might not for another person. Sure, a certain trend in measurement can result in a subjective perception to appear. For example, boosting frequencies at around 100 Hz to 400 Hz could mean a warm sounding track. But if it's overdone, this range of frequencies can cause the track to sound muddy. But who's to judge if the track is muddy or not? You are. You are the subject who decides adding 3 decibels of gain on a band filter at 200 Hz is muddy or not. When another person is subjected to the same set of objective parameters applied, he might find it completely different. Loudness and volume are subjective attributes of audio. Loudness can be thought of as an auditory sensation, where sounds can be ordered on a scale from quiet to loud. It doesn't just depend on the physical factors, such as intensity of the pressure waves reaching your ears, but it also depends on physiological factors, like how your ears are designed, and the natural resonance produced within the boundary of the ear. Even psychological factors, like how your brain colors the perception of loudness for different frequencies, matter as well. Volume is quite similar to loudness, but the term is usually used contextually with the final loudness you can achieve from an amplifier, be it analog or digital. You would have come across volume controls on your radios or speakers or guitar amplifiers with values ranging from 0 to 10. And you might ask, if you can associate volume with a number, does that not mean that it's an objective measure? But what does a volume setting of 4 mean when comparing a tiny desk speaker to a 100 watt guitar amplifier? It doesn't translate to the same loudness. It's just a convenience measure for consumers. Gain is an objective measurement and used in the context of electronics as a measure of the ability of an amplifier circuit to increase or decrease the electrical power of the input signal. Gain is the ratio between the electrical power of the signal at the output stage to the electrical power of the signal at the input stage. If the electrical power of the output signal is higher after amplification, then the gain is positive, and if it's lower, the gain is negative. You might have come across gain controls on amplifiers or audio interfaces. If you look at a guitar amp, for example, you have both a gain knob and a volume knob. Increasing either knobs would increase the loudness of the signal. But what happens underneath the hood is that a guitar amplifier is made up of a preamplifier stage, which boosts the weak signal from the input line in, and a power amplifier stage, which drives a loudspeaker. 
The gain knob is used to control the gain parameter of the preamplifier stage. The volume knob is used to control the gain parameter of the power amplifier stage. You can imagine then, whatever comes out of the preamplifier stage is then blindly amplified by the power amplifier, and the power amplifier determines the final loudness of the signal. There may be cases where you can increase the gain of a preamplifier to the point where the signal starts clipping and starts distorting. The preamplifier stage can be overdriven to produce a warm, subtle distortion or a harsh, fuzzy distortion, both of which can be used artistically. The power amplifier is just used to boost up the loudness of the signal from the output of the preamplifier stage, whatever the state of the signal might be in. Drive is a term that can be used as a synonym for gain in the context of amplifiers. They're both the same. Amplitude and level can be interchangeably used. Amplitude refers to the instantaneous value of a signal over time. I've covered this in considerable detail in the video about the properties of sinusoids, which you can check out if you haven't already. But in this module, we'll talk generally about a few different ways amplitude or level of a signal can be measured and its implications with respect to the loudness of the sound produced. Amplitude as a term is pretty broad and can be used in several different contexts. It can be used for measuring the strength of pressure waves in the physical world. And when these pressure waves are captured by a microphone and converted into electrical signals, we can measure the amplitude of the voltage or current passed through these electrical cables. Even when the signal is converted into the digital domain, we can measure the amplitude of the sampled values of the digitized signal. We can measure the peak value, the peak to peak value, or the root mean squared or the average magnitude value of the signal. And all these measurements are done on the decibel scale. Generally, as the level of the signal increases, its perceived loudness increases as well. But it's not necessarily true that two different signals with the same amplitude can be perceived as having the same loudness, as we'll find out in the next video. All right. That covers all the terms used in the video title. I hear you asking, enough definitions, can you put them all in a single sentence? I can indeed. <clears throat> As I turned the volume knob down, I reduced the gain of the amplifier, reducing the amplitude or level of the signal, which resulted in the loudness of the sound being lower. If you're new to this, there's no doubt that it's confusing as hell with some terms being redundant and ambiguous at times. It takes a while to use the right term in the right context. But as you understand it better, you'll understand that they are fundamentally different concepts with their own areas of study. We'll take a stab at two of these areas, loudness and levels. In the next video, we'll get through the perception of loudness how our sense of loudness is different for different frequencies and all the nuances associated with hearing. After that, we'll look at levels and the technical ways of measuring and calculating the amplitude of signals. And finally, we'll look at a new way of measuring loudness that's all the rage at the moment, the loudness unit. It has redefined the standard used in streaming and broadcast and promises to bring an end to the age of super-compressed audio and the so-called loudness war. <laughs>